So this is the minimum value, and that's the maximum value, and this is the range that we're doing. So we want a minimum, absolute minimum of zero, and an absolute maximum of one. Okay. So current, let's do that, and that'll adjust between six. There we go. That's better. So that should work now perfectly. Uh, yeah, now we're going way too fast. Let's lower down the scale. Cool. And we don't loop it, it stops when it gets there. And we can go back in reverse. I think we can go in reverse. Let me see. Negative. Yeah, there we go. And it stops again. So that takes... Uh, so now that the code is right, we should be able to run a test without pressing play in the editor. And there you go. So you get to see what's going on. Uh, actually, it's way too fast. You know, we can turn that down to about two. So even if and when you do have a, a value, you still have a scale to manipulate how fast you want it to change. So now, uh, the scale in the code is clamped between zero and one. So if we had a negative scale, and we zoom, we scale back down, then we'll... Uh, start going in reverse. But since we're ping-ponging this, going in reverse is, is arbitrary. It's, you know, which way is reverse? So that's, uh, that's value. Let's get our light color back to white. I really don't like doing that. White. Oh. <laughs> Stop the test. Okay, so now we're on white and it was disabled and it's still testing. Hmm. So editor scripts work whether the object is disabled or not, huh? Well, the script is disabled. Interesting. Let's not test that again. Okay, so now this is the color reference component. We add the light. So if I add this script uh, there, or oh it found a, a an, uh, an exposed color reference. So we can change the end color. So let's say we turn this on. We can change the end color dynamically now. So we can make our end color. Let's say it goes from. There we go. That looks a little flashy and yellow so now the end color on at runtime this color reference is gonna ping pong it between these two colors or we can wrap or so the color reference is uh i think it's a like it's not i think but i know it's like a base component but i can't remember if the light reference and the light values light color and the color reference use the same components or values. Anyway, let's see how that works. So there's our end color already changing. So we're going to continue to lerp between, let's speed that up, between the top and the bottom color, where the bottom color could be anything. Um, so let's make it purple. Speed that up. So there's purple. Now it's as well. And without writing a line of code, this is all available through well these components. I wrote code to use uh, some of the stuff these components use. So we have our light. Now we have our fancy light. Let's turn the light color changes off because we're going to turn on a material reference. 
So let's run that so you can see what happens. So our material is changing between blue and eventually it's moving really slowly here between green and back again. So again we can speed that up. Slow it down. Okay, let's see how how that's done. Let's let's get up the plane and it has a mesh render which has materials inside. So let's turn that off. Make sure it doesn't work. So here we are, we're playing. Everything's running, no color changes. This is not changing the color, it's lurping between materials. So let's add a material reference. Scripts, value constraints, references, what type of uh, this class or object you want to reference. So let's uh, do material. Let's open that up. So it's it um, needs a material reference. This material reference can come from any object. But let's just use the one on this component because as Unity is a component based um, engine then we have uh, let's utilize that. So let's drag in the component into the next component. So let's undo that. If I remove that component it says none. Let's close that. And there's, I can't click here. It's em it's empty, and well, I can click on it, but there's nothing being revealed. So now let's uh, add our mesh render, which contains the materials on it. So now we've added our mesh render. Mesh render has to expose material references, so we can pick one. So now, after we pick it, uh, some things come alive, and we need a references to to change. So let's find our materials. Let's add in our min map bump, and now we need a max reference. The code says. So let's add in a min map bump again. Now we have a different warning. It says that the uh, materials match, so we won't really see a change. So let's change the material to the flat and the error went away. And let's see if we can reproduce that. And here we are. So it will warn you to let you know that uh, the materials are the same. Side note, you'll also be warned if the colors are the same. So if I go here and, well, how will I ever get them the same color? <laughs> Let's use white as a stable color. And white. So now all of a sudden we're being told that the colors are are the same. So keep an eye out for the warnings in the inspector. Alright, so now we have our material reference on. We can pick how fast we want it to change whether we want it to loop, whether we want it to wrap and since we haven't seen wrap before we'll use that and let's get the value up a bit more so watch this counter on current so that's going to lerp our material alright so we're headed up and we're headed up pretty fast and we're wrapping Alright, so we go, so if we hit negative on our scale, we start heading in the other direction. Alright, and we go from blue into green, go from blue into green. If that behavior is not what you're looking for, you can ping pong. Then you will go between one color and the next without having to 
touch any any scripting so now that we have that let's uh move on and see what else i have um position behavior let's turn that one off so the position behavior moves an object in 3d or 2d space we'll look at the 2d scene there so now I'm saying I can move my cube around. It's going to move in between the min and max. The min and max is now no longer a number or a uh, material. It's a, a 3D uh, point in 3D space. So I change that and it's on ping pong. And we come with it also comes with a tester. So as I um these components all are the same now we have the min max which we can change here or we can control in the scene and notice as I move one position the other position changes so they can always be at the same they'll always be at the same distance from each other in reference to us us um, a middle this is the middle of the the path so now I'm changing this is a first second middle so min max middle and if you're wondering yes it it's 3d space so I, it will go up and down also so this is moving the actual position of the points let's put that here and if I lock transform, this will move the transform around. And the points will no longer be synchronized. So and then we'll move my along. So as you see, it's in 3D space. I've changed quite a bit here. We can also do a test here in the scene without having to press play. I think my scale can go in reverse so we can see that here during testing we can also change where things are going to end up oh, let's get that started again and my test went off so that's that's the position behavior and that's fine for lots of lots of uses right so you want to move something from one point to the next back and forth at a steady pace you're fine so you can get from one point to the next now this may be a, a bit jerky depending on your circumstance you have a full suite of preset curves and you can adjust your own your own curves so you see the behavior will change to represent the same behavior of the curve. Right, so that's a basic preset. So we have the basic ease in and ease out. So and you can define your own. So now we have a cube just moving around the scene. Let's uh, stop the test. Let's turn the cube off and turn on another set of components that we have as the name implies these components rotate a game object 